Hi there. Well, what will be happening to you throughout your entire academic career is you will be exposed to new ideas and new concepts that you need to understand. And this will probably happen a lot more early on in your career, but it will never stop. There's always new stuff that you need to learn, new concepts to absorb and understand. So how do you do that? So here's some seven points that I think are important to consider. And we're starting right now. The first point is the attitude to take. The attitude that this is actually not a burden, but it's an opportunity. It's a positive challenge and it's a, it's a privilege to be able to deal with new information and to be exposed to new things all the time. Basically, sometimes this attitude is also called a growth mindset, which means that you don't regard your ability as set basically forever by whatever uh, factors, but you think that you can always be better. Uh, you can grow in your abilities, you can practice and get better, and you can learn from mistakes and move on. I think this, is, this basic attitude alone is actually going to be decisive because it is the driving force that will propel you to learn new things all the time. The second point is connect this new concept to things that you already know. Basically, very, very rarely will something be completely out of the blue that connects to absolutely nothing that you know, right? And this is typically not how things work because new concepts build on other concepts and it is super unlikely that if you're working in a certain area, doing a master's, PhD, postdoc, or faculty position, or whatever, that you have never really encountered any of the underlying basics that are connected to a certain concept. So the point is then basically connect to the things that you know and identify the points in the new concept that connect to the things that you already know and then work from there, you know, what is actually new, what departs from the concepts that you already understand anyway. Sometimes the new concept may be rather complicated, maybe a big body of, uh, of work and um, like a, a compound concept almost. And in this case, it is going to be super handy to just break it down and into its component parts and then work on those separately. Because maybe there are some of these that I already understand quite readily and maybe the problem is with some of these components and so you work on them more intensively. And in the end, when you put them all together, you can basically understand the whole. The fourth, uh, this is important for me, is like the motivation. What is your motivation for knowing this? Typically, it's because you have a problem that you are very interested in and that you want to solve or you want to work on. And this is a concept that you need to understand in order to make progress in solving this a particular problem that you're working on. And this is going to be very important because this presents the motivation uh, that propels you to actually invest the time and effort to understand a certain concept. When you know that you need this to address a certain issue that you're working on, then you will automatically be more motivated to do this. Fifth point is understand how you work and how you learn. Everybody does this a little different, right? Uh, so for me, for example, when I want to explain things to myself, I need to make a little doodle, or draw something and make arrows and boxes and whatever, because this is the way I learn things or I explain things to myself. And so basically you need to find out what is it for you. <laughs> do you need to do, listen to classical music or do you need to take a walk first or whatever, whatever routine it is that makes you understand things better. Figure these out and then apply them. The sixth part is very, very important is, and it, it's because often there are bits and pieces in the concept that really are the obstacle to you understanding. In my case, it's usually formulas and math or something, but maybe something different for everybody. There's usually something in there that sort of holds you up and, and uh, holds you back, basically, from understanding a concept. Well, then it's very important to ask yourself and make the analysis, how important is it for me to understand absolutely everything in this concept, even like the formulas in there? And it, it may be that it is absolutely essential to understand everything because this is the direction your work is going and then of course you cannot make a shortcut. But very often, very, very often, it is the case that you can actually focus on some other bits of this concept and you can basically black box, <laughs> let's say the math or whatever it is or the modeling or something that is um, 
not something that you're familiar with, or it can be also molecular work, or it can be a taxonomic concepts or whatever. It is something different for everybody. The bits you don't understand and have immediate access to, maybe you can just black box them and say like, well, I'm going to take this for granted. And so how do I deal with this concept otherwise? Maybe this is the way to um, approach this new idea in a productive way. Basically, this means is a certain amount of working knowledge of this concept enough for me to move on? Do I, I sometimes call it like a comic book understanding. It's maybe not the best way of putting it, but you know, can I compartmentalize the things that are in this concept and can I abstract these things to a point and actually can work with them without having to understand like every little bit of the technical detail. And I think a lot of people do that. And I think this is um, maybe not talked about very often, but I think this is an important way to make sense of new stuff. Now, I, I saved the last and <laughs> seventh point um, at the, uh, for the end, but I think this is extremely important to understand. And that is that this need not be a lonely endeavor. You don't need to spend days, weeks or months on end in your study and basically grind <laughs> through these things on your own and mull them over in your own mind. This is not always the most productive way of going about this at all. So this can be more like um, a, a social or a community effort. Like the simplest is try to explain this to somebody else. Sometimes <laughs> when you're stuck on something and then you talk to somebody else, and at least this is the way it is for me, and you explain this or try to explain this to somebody else, some, something clicks you understand something better because I don't know what the, the, the details, the cognitive details of this, but it is clear that you're in a different mindset or in a different mode when you explain something to somebody. And sometimes this is just all it takes and then it made this click and you understand something better. But this is also why it's a good idea to go like in, uh, to do this in a group basically to have a co-learning session to discuss this with others and you know this is one of the very many reasons why we have lab meetings for example because there there is a forum where you can uh, like say well I didn't really understand that did anybody else understand it and it turns out well many people also didn't understand it but some people understood it a little bit more and then you know from them talking about it you understand it better in the end as well this may be more typically technical details on a paper which maybe I'll talk about in another video but but I think the same applies for like concepts it's like okay I didn't quite get that but maybe somebody else that they can explain it to me and in the interaction you maybe also get it better but it may also be that you need to invest more time if this is a very central concept for your work, for example. And then it may be good to go attend a workshop or attend a, a course or an online course or um, engage in a conversation with somebody who has more experience on this and like just have a, a chat or a, a conversation. A Q&A if you want with somebody that is really very familiar with this concept. And how, wh whatever you do, I mean, the most important thing is uh, often the situation is improved by your interacting with other people. It does not need to be lonely. And of course, it also implies you shouldn't be shy to ask for help. You can ask for help of a lab mate or your mentor, or your supervisor, your PI or a colleague or somebody else. Just ask for help. I think this is the best way to go about it after you have at least given it a solid try. I think this is also important to say, don't use people as, the, as your external brain. I think this is a bad habit. So think about it first, but then if you really are stuck and you can't go on, then obviously ask for help because you don't need to be alone in this. Right, I hope that uh, when you keep these seven things in mind, you'll be able to understand your next concept better. And because this is something that will always be accompanying you through your entire career, so it's important that you have worked out a mode on how to deal with new stuff. Because after all, this is what makes science so fun, is that we always deal with new things, that we're exposed to new stuff and can process that and work with it and build on it. This is basically a description of the scientific enterprise. So this is why it's so important to have this worked out for something as central as how do I deal with new uh, concepts that I don't immediately understand. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.